please do uh, take hold of one of the church Bibles and turn to page 1159. 1159. Our reading comes from 2 Corinthians, Paul's second letter to the Corinthian church. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, page 1159. starting at the first verse. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God in Corinth, together with all his holy people throughout Achaia, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, It is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us as you help us by your prayers. Then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favour granted us in answer to the prayers of many. This is the word of the Lord. Father, as we look into your word now, we pray that through your spirit you'll be speaking to our hearts so that we may be changed, transformed, and live lives that bring honour and glory to the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now those of you who were able to make it to our annual meeting this past Wednesday will have heard frankly, how very well things are going at St. John's. The fact that we're now unfortunately having to turn away thousands of people every week for our services because we, we can't fit everybody in with social distancing. Or the fact that our YouTube services are becoming an internet sensation. Or our worship band's new album going platinum. According to our financial report, our church income now tops the million pound mark. And I guess so much of our success is down to the highly intelligent, capable, charming rector who somehow combines amazing pastoral care, preaching of the highest caliber, slick organization, (laughs) along with real humility. Today you really are privileged to be here at St. John's. If you were here on Wednesday, you'll know that's not quite true. But we do like success, don't we? We like that to give that impression that everything is going well, that we are strong. 
In life, we're told to play to our strengths or to put our best foot forward. Our CVs focus on our skills and achievements. That's what our, our culture tells us to do. So we fill our Facebook pages with pictures of risen cakes, gained certificates, and flattering photos. I've yet to see anybody put on their Facebook page that they failed their driving test. Success and strength is celebrated, and, and to be fair, pretty much always has been in Roman and Greek culture. Success, achievement, victory was literally paraded in the streets. Now we're beginning a sermon series looking at Paul's second letter to the Corinthian church. And in this letter we find out that the Christian faith turns the culture of strength and success on its head. Listen to St. Paul here. And rather than bigging up his strength as an apostle, a, a leader of leaders within the church, what does he say at the beginning in verse 8? We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received a sentence of death. This isn't an upbeat, self-promoting Facebook post. Now, Paul is real. In fact, it's pretty dark, isn't it? We received a sentence of death. He may well have been the one who founded the church in Corinth. He may well have been the one that we remember today as the great apostle. But it certainly sounds as if Paul is depressed, at the least. Look at the downbeat words in these first 11 verses. Distress, trouble, struggle, sufferings, despair, peril, death. Now in the coming weeks we'll explore uh, what was going on in the church, why uh, Paul is writing this intensely personal letter. But the great theme of 2 Corinthians, which we'll be coming back to time and again, is that God's strength is revealed in our weakness. God's strength is revealed in our weakness. And St. Paul's purpose is to encourage us to keep on going in the Christian life. Because Paul knows that life isn't easy. And he knows that being a Christian isn't easy. And today in our passage, we see that life isn't easy because of the sufferings that we experience, the trouble that comes our way. And you might be here today with tough stuff going on. Health problems, depression, anxiety, financial struggles, relationship difficulties, spiritual battles. You may be thinking, my life is such a mess, I don't even know where to begin. If that's the case, this service, this passage, is for you. And I guess if you have life completely sorted, if you're just about to publish your book, The Guide to Living a Fabulous and Fantastic Life, can I suggest this service this passage probably isn't for you. But in the midst of suffering, we see two important points. Firstly, in our suffering, we do not need to be alone. I heard of a lady who had an awful day, uh, one of those days where everything was going wrong, and she was struggling all on her own. And she received a text that simply said, I'm here for you. Powerful and timely words that just hit the spot and tears rolled down her face. I'm here for you. 
And when she gathered herself, she didn't, uh, she realized she didn't recognize the number. And so she texted back, thank you so much for your kind and thoughtful words. Can I ask you, who are you? The reply came, your taxi driver. <laughs> but seriously, the wonderful news of a Christian faith is that we do not need to be alone in our troubles. Verse 3, we have the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. When we suffer as a Christian, we share in the sufferings of Christ, and therefore comfort, our comfort, abounds through Christ. Actually, it's only the Christian faith that gives a credible response to the suffering we experience. Now, I know that we often think that suffering is an obstacle to faith. Why does God allow this to happen? Now, I'm not saying that these are issues that we can simply sweep away. Now, suffering raises all kinds of hard questions for the Christian. But suffering raises even harder questions for those who are not Christians. The evangelist Glenn Scrivener says that all other responses to suffering boil down to two responses. One is chaos. Well, there is no reason. It's just the chaos of the world. Random chance or bad luck, if you like. There's certainly no meaning to the suffering you experience. Don't even bother to think about that question, why? Just chaos. But in my experience, everybody is looking for a reason. They want to know that their suffering means something. So chaos is one response. The other is, is karma. You may be suffering, but you deserve it. Whether it's the, the traditional Hindu idea that perhaps in the previous life you did something wrong, or, or perhaps that kind of just that general idea that life catches up with you. It's karma. I want to suggest there's certainly no hope or compassion in karma. But a Christian faith says something different in the face of suffering. Because God the Son, as we remember when we come to communion every week, God the Son suffered more than any. He entered into our suffering. He knows all about it. God walks with us through suffering and gives his compassion and comfort. Paul also, Paul also makes it clear that it isn't only God who walks with you. Through, through your troubles. Now we walk together. A few weeks back when we looked at the Lord's Prayer, we saw the we and the us and the our words, our Father. You see, we heard that praying isn't meant to be a solo activity. It's something we do together in community as a church. And just as we pray together we also suffer together. Verse 4, our troubles. Verse 5, we share. Verse 8, troubles we experienced. And I could go on. See, the Bible knows nothing about Christians suffering alone. God is with us and we suffer together. I know there's a, a tendency to retreat when things are tough, but it really shouldn't be that way. I often hear the words, I, I've lost contact with the church because I've been struggling with this or with that. And when we're suffering, it's even more important to be together. The stiff upper lip or going it alone, that kind of mentality, 
is nowhere to be found in the Bible. And we need this church, St. John's, to be the kind of church where we share in suffering, knowing that God is always with us and he's full of compassion and he's the God of all comfort, and knowing that we are here for one another. The second important thing is that in our suffering we are to rely on God. In verse 9, Paul gives an explanation for the suffering that they were experiencing together. You see, suffering is never meaningless. Suffering as a Christian always is serving a purpose. Again, don't get me wrong, this isn't a, a, a quick, easy platitude. The purpose of suffering doesn't take away the pain. The hurt is still there. And in this life, we, we may only just catch a, a, a very small bit of the picture. But it's only in eternity do we get to see that full picture of what our suffering accomplished. Only then will we be able to understand what God was doing. But the suffering and the pain we experience does mean something. It's not chaos. It's not karma. See, for Paul, they experienced suffering so that they might rely not on themselves, but on God. Self-reliance is the constant temptation. We want to be successful, strong, self-made and yet all this does is feed the lie that we don't need God Paul is saying our struggles and our weakness they push us back to God and we rely on him when we're so weak and powerless and our own resources fail we rely on God and that's when God's strength is revealed the weak become strong. The failures become successes because of God's strength. Why? Verse 9. He's the one who raises the dead. He's the God of resurrection power, of restoration, of making all things new. And we set our hope on him. So if you're going through it now, know that you're not alone. Know that God is with you. Know that as brothers and sisters in Christ, we're here to share in your sufferings. And know that you can rely on God. The God who raises the dead the God of resurrection power. And as a church, I think we need to get this idea that in church, strength and success aren't what they seem. I think for St. John's, this is really important. If we go through 2 Corinthians together, do come along on, on Sundays or uh, on Wednesday evenings. If you, if you can't get here, do tune in to the to the, uh, the sermons on our YouTube channel. Because if we're going to be the church that God wants us to be, we need to learn that God wants us to come as we are, broken, messed up, all kinds of things going on, all kinds of struggles and suffering. And in our very weakness, his power will be revealed that means you can't count yourself out things are tough if you think well god's not gonna use me i've got, I've got no role to play you know all of the uh, uh, the rubbish in my life now god uses the weak that reveals his strength we've just celebrated pentecost sunday where we were thinking about how God by his spirit empowers 
us to do his work. God's strength, God's power working in our weak and feeble and failing lives to bring glory to himself, to reveal his strength. Let's pray. Lord, by your Holy Spirit, take the words that we've read in your word, the words that have come out of uh, my mouth, and Lord, make these things real in our lives this coming week. Lord, especially for those of us who are struggling and troubled at this time. Lord, may we know of your presence with us. Lord, may we learn to share our sufferings together. And Lord, we thank you that you are a God who uses weak and failing people to do extraordinary things for your kingdom and that you reveal your strength in us. Help these words to go down deep in uh, our life as a church. For Jesus' sake. Amen. When peace like a river that